Hey, thank you for watching this video. Do you suffer from trauma? In this video, I'm gonna share with you my own experience with trauma. I'm gonna share with you all the things that I went through and how I was able to transform them. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you eight tips that you can use to start to free yourself from trauma. I myself didn't have much guidance when I went through all of what I'm about to share with you, which is why I'm happy to be able to help you in your own healing journey. When I was five, my mother disappeared. My three-year-old sister and I woke up in her bedroom where we had been sleeping with her the night before and found that she was nowhere in sight. My parents were in the process of getting a divorce. After years of trying to save my father from his addictive personality, my mother realized that who she really needed to save was us. So she was in the process of rebuilding her life without him. That's why he wouldn't have been there. Two days later, my father then disappeared leaving us to be raised by a highly critical grandmother who had a lot of emotional problems. Needless to say, I had a tough childhood. One of the things that really got to me was the fact that I didn't know what had happened to my parents. Were we abandoned? Did my father do something to my mother? The whole situation left this uneasy feeling of instability in me. I was always feeling that something bad could happen again because that's what I had constantly experienced. Especially if you've experienced trauma, you know how it is for you to always be anticipating that bad things could happen at any moment because that's what you've known. Anxiousness became a part of how I functioned. Years went by. Then at the age of 19, after asking family members, I found my father. I asked him what had happened and he said that our mother had taken off with another man and that he was as much of a victim as us. He said that he had taken off only because he didn't have papers and he was an alcoholic, so he was in no place to take care of children. I forgave him for all the things that had happened in the past, including him touching me as a kid. That's not an easy thing to do, but I did it. For 10 years, I became a part of his life. I was so happy that at last I had a parent. We developed a great relationship. It turned out that we had a lot of things in common, such as a love of archaeology and anthropology. We traveled together to some of the most amazing archaeological sites. I grew to trust and love my father and was very giving to him. He expressed that he was very happy that I was in his life. Then, at the end of those 10 years, his story started to slip. I went to see some family members that I had never met before, and they looked at me as though they had seen a ghost. Something fell off. I mentioned to a family member that I was starting to doubt my dad. Weeks later, my uncle told me the truth. Before I go on with my story, please take a moment to give this video a like. I appreciate your taking the time to do so. Now back to my story. Imagine that I'm sitting on my uncle's lawn chair when he tells me that my father had murdered my mother in the same room that my three-year-old sister and I had been sleeping in. Can you imagine somebody telling you that? How would you have felt? I felt this rush of overwhelming feeling. I felt anger, sadness, and so many other horrible emotions at the same time. I felt so hurt. By the way, feel free to share your own story in the comments area. I know that people who have experienced trauma can often feel alone and different, so feel free to connect through the comments area. Knowing that new information added a whole new layer of trauma to all of what I had already experienced. I was a total mess. That's what led me on my journey of self-healing that would ultimately take me from trauma to triumph. I wanna share the eight things that will help you to overcome and free yourself from trauma. I'm sharing these because my goal is to show you some mindsets that can help put you on the path to healing and empowerment. The first two are healing tips and the others are the mindset shifts that are gonna propel you in moving forward in healing and making yourself a stronger person. Number one, understand the mindset that you have now is not the mindset that is gonna get you to where you wanna be. That's why it's super important that you do therapy. That being said, you have to find the right therapist and the right form of therapy. I myself saw a psychologist and a psychiatrist and neither of them were it for me. Hypnotherapy changed my life. And to this day, it's hands down in my eyes, the best form of therapy for healing trauma. Regardless of what you choose to do, make sure that whatever you're doing is effective for you. If it doesn't work, then do something else. Never give up on your mental health. Number two, healing is a process. There are different layers to healing. I did the bulk of what I would call the foundation of my healing when I first found hypnotherapy. Since then, I've worked on a variety of topics that all one way or another were connected with the trauma I experienced. Some of them have included anxiety and anxiety and overeating, and the fact that I grew up with a grandmother that could be really condescending. So I had to really work on my self-worth. 
And by the way, there will be times when you feel that you fully healed something and then you realize that there's yet another layer to whatever it is that is showing up for you to heal. Just go with it. Think of yourself as a fine piece of art that with continued effort is becoming this amazing painting. Before we start with the mindset shifts that are going to propel you forward in your healing and make you a stronger person, feel free to take a moment to subscribe to this channel so that you can see more videos like this one. I'm actually in the process of creating a program that will help you overcome trauma and propel you forward in life. So you want to know when it's ready. Okay, let's start with those mindset shifts. The dysfunctional things that people have said and done to you have everything to do with them and not with you. Our minds often make whatever happens about us and in doing so we personalize events that can only lead to you feeling like you're not good enough and feeling insecure. Don't let your mind go there. Keep those boundaries. Number four, have the wisdom to see that hurt people hurt others. So for example, when I looked back at my dad's life, I realized that he was carrying a lot of hurt. He had a bipolar mom who didn't know how to cope with a kid with ADD. She had done some messed up things to him as a kid and even as an adult. All he ever wanted was his mother's love and approval, and he never got it. When you're able to see the humanity in somebody else, you're able to go from seeing that person as a monster to seeing that person from a place of empathy and understanding. Number five, instead of allowing trauma to stay a source of weakness, allow it to become a source of strength. Let it fuel you. So for example, once I healed myself, my focus shifted to helping others. It's now been over 15 years since I've been on this path. I assure you that you, have your own particular gifts to offer this world. By channeling what happened into something much more positive, you end up becoming a light in the world. And God knows that this world needs it. Don't tell yourself your life is over because of what happened. You play your cards right and it can end up becoming a source of strength. With every traumatic situation that I've experienced, I focused on learning, learning from the mistakes of others, learning from my own mistakes as well. So for example, I don't put up with toxic behavior. It's not happening in my life. Because of that, I'm more empowered than ever. Number seven, instead of feeling that trauma defines you, use it to create a new version of yourself, a 2.0 version that's in line with your goals. Realize that it's up to you whether you'll stay stuck or move forward in life. Choose to move forward in life. And lastly, don't compare yourself to anybody else. I used to always think, why me? I always assumed that everybody had better experiences and a better life than me. That kind of thinking never helped me. It only made me feel depressed. That's why I stopped doing it to myself and you should too. These were the mindset shifts that ultimately prompted me to go from becoming a victim to becoming a pillar and guide for so many who have also experienced trauma. Are you ready to overcome trauma and be your best version of yourself? You can do it. Be sure to go over these tips again, jot them down and go over them on a regular basis. You're powerful. You put your mind to anything and you can and will not only overcome, but expand and grow as a human being.